Good evening and welcome to another family and community update. My name is David Hansen and I serve as the superintendent here in RUSD. Folks, we recognize that 2020 has been a challenging year for all of us and certainly a challenging year for our students and families. And we appreciate our families and uh, we, we're grateful for your patience and certainly to all of our staff for their hard work as uh, we have now been on this path since March for nine months. It's hard to believe that we are still on this path. But thank you so much for helping us here in our school district uh, provide the services we're providing and coming together and having us all be unified. I want to give a special welcome to our Spanish speaking families this evening. We are also broadcasting a Spanish simulcast at the same time on our YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. And I'd like to ask Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Sergio San Martin, to provide in Spanish how to access this meeting to our Spanish speaking families. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. Muy buenas tardes y bienvenidos. Tenemos una transmisión en vivo por separado para nuestra comunidad de habla hispana. Para unirse y escuchar, siga el enlace en la parte de abajo de la pantalla. Muchas gracias. Back to you, Dr. Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Sergio San Martin. And at this time, I'd like to invite our new board president, Mr. Tom Hunt, to unmute his device and to provide a brief welcome to our, our family and community members. Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Dr. Hansen, and I, I very much appreciate that on behalf of the entire board. Hello, neighbors in our USD nation. And as Dr. Hansen aptly said, it's, it's amazing we're in the ninth month and we're heading forward at, at a full year soon. And uh, as we all watch the news, things are changing across the nation, and hopefully there'll be more clarity added. But I want to tell you the board has tremendous confidence in what Superintendent Hansen and his staff uh, here have put together as a plan to return to campuses, to be safe and, and to enhance education. And as we, we're going to talk about a little later, social and emotional uh, support and uh, education support. Um, and, and again, you can be assured as our citizens and our neighbors and our stakeholders that even the Riverside County Office of Education has advised their, the other 22 districts to, to look at RUSD as a model, uh, including this design you're going to hear and even our MOUs that we've reached with our teachers and others to, to go back. Uh, I want to talk about a couple things is, and I think we're going to bring up the, uh, the new board here in a moment uh, or the entire board, uh, but uh, we will want to be in increasing our communications to you and our community in a variety of ways. And as, as the board begins to go into some retreats to look at our goals and have them match to the current time, I'm excited about that and, and we're looking forward to hearing from you. And um, continuing what is the importance about Riverside, a uniqueness of being a diverse community and a community that if Polly's graduating class this year will be the 135th class. Dr. Hansen, can we bring up that slide with uh, our board? Thank you. Again, I'm, I'm uh, Tom Hunt. I was, I'm elected as a new president. This will be my fourth time, uh, beginning my 14th year. Uh, Mr. Brent Lee, uh, a, a fine gentleman here in town. Uh, he was in, I believe, his, uh, nearly his eighth year, uh, is our vice president. The clerk of the board is uh, trustee Dr. Angelo Farouk. Uh, Mrs. Kathy Alavi, trustee, is our past president and will be helping us very much, particularly helping this president uh, as we move forward and will be a liaison to City Hall. And then I want, really want to welcome, and many of you know him, is, is former North High Principal uh, Dale Kinnear, who will, uh, will be our newest seat member with Mrs. Locke Dawson moving over to City Hall. And uh, Dale will bring an awful lot of uh, uh, in, insight ha as an education leader. And then finally, our, our student member, uh, Ms. Ray Mystery of, uh, I believe she's from Poly High. But uh, again, we want the students involved. They are our customers and they are the outcome that we're trying to reach. I do wish you all on behalf of the board a, a merry holiday, a holiday that brings even more appreciation for what our families are and, and the blessings we, we have today in these amazing times of challenge. But in this time of challenge, the board, I'm challenging them to not miss the opportunities that are in these crises to improve what we have. 
lastly, um, as we look at the holidays, you know, one of my favorite holiday chorals is, is uh, it's the most wonderful time of the year. The closing stanza of that Christmas carol is, and mom and dad can't wait for school to start again. I promise you, we can't either. We're excited about it, and you have a very good staff here and a plan that uh, your board, who represents you, is proud of. Thank you, Dr. Hanson. Thank you, Mr. Hunt, and we're so grateful for your dedication in the number of years as a board member here in ISD and for the leadership of the entire school board, and we're looking forward to serving with you as our president of the board for the year 2021, so thank you. Appreciate Next it, Dr. Hanson. Thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, this week, we did have a board meeting and we provided the school board with an update on uh, uh, several different things you're going to hear about this, uh, this evening during this community update. But one is, if you're familiar with the map of California, you can see the, uh, the counties that are in purple, uh, those that are in the red tier and so forth, none right now uh, that are in the yellow tier up and down the state. And you can see the numbers for our region specifically on the top left hand. Uh, side there. I won't read those to you, but they're going up. The latest being 49 or 47, the adjusted rate out of 100,000 for those that are test positive and the positivity rate. Next slide is a slide that we've shown you before and you're probably more familiar with. This next slide shows us that we currently in our region are in the purple tier. In order to move back down into the red tier, you can see that our adjusted case rate needs to be between four and seven, and yet it's 47. It has skyrocketed recently. And then you can see the positivity tests need to be between five and 8%, and ours is currently for our region at 14.8%. So we have a ways to go, but uh, these change weekly, and we'll keep our uh, community and the school board updated as we move forward. And the next slide, this is something new for you. Maybe you've seen it on the news, but. Our governor has divided our state into five different regions. You can see there on the screen. From Northern California, that's a large region, all the way down to Southern California, which is an even larger region. And in between, you can see the three other regions. Uh, the blue on the screen means that all of those regions are under the governor's current stay home orders. Up in the Bay Area and Northern California, they're not on the governor's stay home orders, however, I've learned that the Bay Area called their own stay home order out of an abundance of caution. So you can see the COVID numbers are certainly affecting the state up and up and down the state. And uh, just want to update you that we're part of the Southern California region and we are on those stay home orders for at least three weeks and we are in week two of that third week. So as I mentioned, we'll update you as we receive information. At this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Ryan Lewis, Assistant Superintendent, to take us through this next part of the meeting we had with the board this week to update you on the in-person family survey, social and emotional health, athletics, and things such as that. So, Dr. Lewis. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. I do have a, a few updates for our community, and I'll begin with our in-person survey on the next slide. Uh, if everyone recall, approximately a month ago, our board asked for input for our community. As we look as a board of education and as a school district of making decisions regarding returning to school in person, they really wanted to hear from our community. And I would like to thank the outpouring of responses that we have that I'm going to review this evening. So uh, the survey goal was to hear from our in-person families. The survey window was open for approximately two weeks. And then with a dedicated outreach uh, that I'll review on uh, with the group this evening. So on the next slide, the window is November 19th to December 4th. And again, we reached out to our in-person families because that's when we are able is the group that will be returning to campus in person and wanted to get their perspective on a return. On the next slide, this is an, an idea or a graphic to represent to the community of outreach. So our, under the direction of our Board of Education, doing our very best to reach as many families as possible to make sure we hear all voices. So you, you may have received many text messages or emails or reminder phone calls, ensuring that every family had the opportunity to participate, to have their voice heard. And we did hear from the largest 
return on surveys that we've had in the recent year. On the next slide, we do want to thank the nearly 60% of our in-person families, totaling almost 14,000 responses, sharing their opinions and their viewpoints district-wide on our return to in-person. Before we get into the data on the next slide, I'd like to use this as an example. So when we bring it to the Board of Education, what we are providing uh, is a summary. And the summary is to reassure the Board of Education that this does represent our district. So Dr. Dan Sosa and his team out of our research team, they put the survey together, they reviewed all the results, and they did verify with the Board of Education last night that based on the responses provided, based on the students enrolled, and the percentage of completion, that this survey does represent all of the different groups in our district. For example, when you look at race and ethnicity, or socioeconomics, or disability status, or language fluency, and each of those underneath that, we have multiple groups of students and wanted to make sure that their voices were representative. And that was assured to the Board of Education last night. On the next slide, we also looked at it by cluster to make sure that we were, again, equally represented across our district. So what you see on the screen were our response rates of families in the in-person program by cluster. And again, these were representative of the student groups that are attending the in-person, again, based on enrollment. And then to look at it one more way to reassure our board that it was representative of our district, we looked at it by level both elementary, middle school, and high school, looking at the response rate, and you can see they are very similar. So the summary of this part is to reassure the board that the data they are reviewing is the best sample that we can provide district-wide. After we looked at the response rates to reassure the board that it is a representative sample across the district, the next thing we looked at was the construction of the survey. So knowing the board was considering an elementary waiver, the first four items were geared to our elementary families in the in-person program. Then we added three additional items to get other feedback on when we return to in-person. And I'm gonna provide a quick summary of the results of those surveys. The first question we posed to our elementary families was while in the purple tier, what would be the level of support for our district to apply for an elementary school waiver? There were four choices. The two choices that combined in support totaled 67% or what we're calling active support for our district applying for a waiver. The other two choices that I'll speak to uh, momentarily, we'll talk to those that were not in support and we asked a follow-up question. The next slide asks when we do, when and if we do apply for a county waiver, what grade level should we include? And that looked at from TK through second, maybe TK through third, or do we look at TK through sixth grade? And the largest results supported 60% that when we do look at a waiver, if that is something we pursue, that we look at all elementary grades TK through six. The next question when we asked, again, if we were to apply for a waiver and a return, how would you feel about the return? Would you be willing to return? And nearly 70% stated that they would be willing to return to school. If they selected an option that they said they would not be willing to return or they were undecided, they were asked a follow-up question. And on the next slide, that's the following question asked, would you prefer to remain in distance learning? And of the group that selected that they would, or were either undecided or unwilling to return, 55 responded that 55% responded that they would prefer to stay in distance learning at that time. Now we transition to the larger group. When we ask when schools would reopen, what is the comfort level of our in-person families to return and when? What you see on the slide is approximately 50% of our in-person families who responded said they would like to return as early as January 2021. Additionally, 30 or 31% shared that they would be willing to return if and when our county was to reach the red tier. So what you see here is an inference. And what we're inferring is that 80% 
of our in-person families would be in support of returning in person when our county reaches the red tier. The next question asked when we do return in the red tier or at that point of time, what grade level should we look at? Should we look at elementary, only middle, only high, or a combination thereof? And nearly 60% of respondents indicated that they would like us to look at all levels, including elementary, middle, and high school when we return. And the last question had to do with timing. Knowing the impact on families in different situations, we posed a question of would, how much lead time would you need as a community to return in person? 45% of respondents, which was the largest group, indicated they would like two weeks. The other two choices were they would not need advance notice or they would like one week. So 45% of respondents said they would need two weeks notice prior to the return. So in summary of our survey, there were a few things that we summarized for our Board of Education. Number one, the response rate in all fields of survey statistics indicated a strong to excellent response of nearly 60% of our in-person families. We also reassured our Board of Education that the responses were representative of our student groups that make up Riverside Unified. There was active support, nearly 67%, for the application of an elementary waiver. And then in the last question, there is strong support to bring our in-person students back to campus when able to do so. So as a summary for the survey, thank you to everyone who participated. The Board of Education will be reviewing this at a later date and appreciated your time. Moving on to the next update, if you are a 7th through 12th grade family, you are aware that we just presented our program choice change for those family interested at the conclusion of our first semester. So what you see on the screen now is a quick summary. We received a little over 200 requests to consider changing placement, and that is going from the in-person to virtual or virtual to in-person or in or out of the home-based program when we begin the second semester. 201 requested a change. And thank you to all of the hard work of our site administrators and counselors and everyone involved. They were able to honor 143 or nearly 71% of those changes beginning second semester. So thank you to everybody involved in that process. We know it is a very labor intensive and also difficult for families to make that decision. So thank you to all those involved. Transitioning into a different update in a different area were social emotional supports. Knowing that between staff and students and our community, we're in very trying times and we recognize that. So our Board of Education asked for an update from our practitioners. So we uh, very much appreciated an update from our school counselors, our school psychologists, and our student assistant program counselors that reviewed with the Board of Education last night what they mainly do in their role. And a few just quick highlights before I give you a, a summary of the data. Number one, they talked about the teamwork. They talked about the recognition of work between different support programs, but also the district office, classroom teachers, and families. And they did an outstanding job summarizing the work they do for students and the gratitude that they have for all of the staff and families and students at this time. On the next slide is just a graphic. And the graphic just gives you a quick snapshot from those three different groups that are so vital to our students' success of what they've provided over time. So for example, they've had nearly 3,300 individual counseling sessions, well over 1,000 check-in meetings with students and families, over 400 webinars, and the rest of the data you can see for yourself. While we know that we will continue to provide more for our community and our students, just so grateful for the work of our counselors, our SAP program, our school psychologists, and our teachers, and our Family Resource Center, and everyone involved for continuing to provide resources for our families and students. So thank you again to our three speakers and everything that everyone is doing for our students. The one message that we took away last night that we again want to share with everyone who is listening and encourage you to share this with friends and families who may need it 
Uh, during these holiday times, if you find yourself or anyone that you know needing support, know that Riverside has options for you. Number one, Care Solace. 24 seven support for our students and families. There is an email address, a phone number, video chats. If you find that you need support, Care Solace is there for you and something that we encourage you to share if anybody who you know needs that. As well as some additional resports, supports. On the bottom, National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is there for you or anyone that you know of that may need it. We have a crisis text line that if you need support, again, you can reach out and someone will be there to help and support you. As a family, if you just need resources, our RUSD wellness page that you can see on the screen provides many different experiences and resources for our families. If there is just something you need that is unique or just to take advantage of, it is there for you as well. So feel free to use those as any type of friends or family that may need it. Another update that we have is how are we starting semester two or the return after break? So the first thing that we would like everyone to know beginning January 4th, for the majority of our students, we will return in distance learning. Enjoy the break, enjoy your time. We look forward to seeing you just in distance learning on January 4th. On January 21st, we will provide another update to our Board of Education and at that time, uh, possibly have new information or additional information. But while on January 4th we return, our small cohorts for targeted support will also continue, as well as our learning hubs. So on the screen is just a quick summary. Our learning hubs, through partnership with our city and uh, city of Riverside and Champions that began October 15th, those will continue actually through winter break for those who need to take advantage of that. And again, when we return on December 4th. Preschool through adult transition, moderate to severe special education classes that began on December 7th will resume for the 380 students, 24 school sites on January 4th when we return. And then we do look forward to the expansion of preschool and elementary mild to moderate classes right now scheduled to begin on January 19th for 280 students that will be welcoming back to our campuses at that time. Dr. Lewis, can I interrupt you for just a moment, please? Yes, I just want the community to know that in our governor's orders, as well as in the guidelines from public health, we are encouraged to provide these small cohorts from some of our most needy and vulnerable uh, families and students. A small cohort consists of students and adults combined of 16 or less with all the safety precautions in in place so it's by invitation only and you can see when all three cohorts get up and going we'll be servicing or meeting the needs of nearly 1,000 of our students throughout the school district and the superintendent i just want to express my gratitude to the staff for helping us provide this service to our families and to our students because without you we could not make this happen and again grateful to our governor and the public health officials that have uh, helped us be able to provide a service to, again, our families of, of need. So I just wanted to share that with the community this evening, Dr. Taylor, or Dr. Lewis, back to you. Thank you, Dr. Hanson. And the last update I'll be providing to our community before turning it back to Dr. Hanson is regarding athletics. We know we have nearly 1,500 students participating in conditioning and other athletes that are waiting for a decision or guidance coming, and we received that guidance. So just as a quick summary, all fall sports competitions have been postponed until 2021, with an update becoming early January. They are still working in tandem with the Department of Public Health, CIF, and our state and county officials with additional guidance coming soon. And you'll see a few more changes. League competitions are still scheduled, and there have been some changes of particular sports. Other information that will be coming over the next few days, two weeks. Number one, on January 9th, the competition schedule will be evaluated weekly by both our section and our state. January 19th, CIF will be meeting looking at all sports statuses for fall sports, 
and at that point looking at spring sports as well. The one takeaway for our community is conditioning is still permitted with a few changes on protocols that your school sites will be reviewing with you, but that is permitted and we will continue. So we'll continue to bring you updates regarding athletics. Uh, at this time, we will continue conditioning and provide that when available. And thank you to all of our families and coaches and athletes for taking the safety precautions seriously and following them so, so well. Uh, we appreciate all of your efforts. And Dr. Hansen, that does conclude my update. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate that. I'm grateful to you and uh, your entire team and all your hard work for preparing the presentation and for helping us as a school district uh, do the things we're doing. So thank you. And the, we, one last thing to close out our community update this evening is we're so grateful for our partners. And we received good news that, well, from one of our partners, Cal Baptist University. For all high school students, as you can see, grades 9 through 12, they're having a winter architecture pre-college academy. It's for 9th to 12th grade. It's free of charge. It's from December the 28th through the 29th. As you can see, the hours from 9 a.m. to 3 and you can register online and you can see the address there online that you can uh, go to. So we'd encourage any ninth through 12th grader that want to be part of this academy during those dates of December the 28th and 29th to sign up. And again, thank you to President Ellis and his team over there at CBU that makes this possible. So that concludes our presentation for this evening, our update. As Dr. Lewis said, we'll see you all back in distance learning on January the 4th on January the 21st. That's a Thursday evening. The board's going to start meeting on Thursdays. We'll provide the board with another update and then I suspect we'll shortly thereafter do another community update uh, there in January to let you know where we where we stand. So until then, be safe, stay healthy, and blessings to all of you. Take care.